Hi, my name is Alex Milder. I'm a graduate from North Dakota State University in electrical engineering. And I am Eric Bellander, a senior in mechanical engineering at North Dakota State University. And this is our most recent, recent project we've been working on. It is an automatic rope cutter for the One Log Fire Company based out of Plymouth, Minnesota. Uh, they make really cool products, so if you don't know what they are, you should uh, definitely go check them out at onelogfire.com. But the premise for this project was the One Log Fire Company right now is cutting the Cecil rope for the handle of these logs by hand, um, taking a lot of time and manpower to do so. So what we came up with was this, uh, as I said before, an automatic rope cutter, and it will completely eliminate the human aspect from cutting these ropes, saving time and manpower. Now we will go on to show you how we designed it um, and the main components of this and how exactly it works. Mechanical engineer, I was obviously in charge of the mechanical design of this project. And you can see the overall enclosure of this is made out of wood. And the front piece here is actually CNC'd to allow for room for the LCD, as well as the edge cutter, which sticks out to allow for the razor blade to cut the rope. Now the inside and structural components of this is made out of aluminum extrusions, which is cheap and easy for us to cut. And the front is made up of mostly 3D printed parts, which again is easy for us to get and relatively cheap as we have a 3D printer. Now the original design for this actually started out with two gears, hopefully pulling the rope through, as you can see here, much similar to this design. Uh, but we actually encountered much, a lot of slippage. So we went to this design where we'd have a drive wheel and a guide wheel, much like many 3D printers and their extruders. Now this was great until we ran into issues with slippage as well. To overcome this issue, we used simply rubber bands. Now, this would increase our friction between the rope as it moved through, and to help with that, we added two different springs for increased tension. Now, the way you feed this is you push the lever down here, insert your rope through the feed tube, make sure, make sure that it slides in between our guide wheel and our drive wheel and through the front channel until it is underneath our edge cutter. You can then activate the stepper which is attached to our drive wheel and it pushes the rope the desired length and will then activate the guy edge cutter which then cuts our rope. As for the inside, like I said earlier, it's made up of mostly aluminum extrusions and you can see here is our linear actuator along with our edge cutter which we modified to stay in place so that it could cut the rope. Now the rest of these electronic components I'll have Alex talk to you about since he knows more about this than I do. So being the electrical engineer on this project, I was obviously in charge of all software design and hardware design. Right away here we'll go through all the front end electrical components and then after that we'll go and take off this housing, turn it around and give you what is in the back in the box. So right here we've got our double pole double throw power switch and the reason for that is our power supply actually requires you to take in short 5 volts to ground which will then turn on your 12 volt power supply. So that's the reason for that. We'll switch the 5 volts to ground and also switch on the 12 volts, reducing um, current consumption and safety. Right here, we've got our 3.5 inch TFT touchscreen display, which is run on an ILI9486 micro driver and is interfaced to the Arduino Mega, which is our main microcontroller. Right here we've got a buck converter which actually takes in our 12 volts from the power supply, bucks it down to 7 volts and safely feeds it into the Arduino Mega. The reason for the buck converter is the Arduino Mega voltage re regulator cannot dissipate that much power when dropping from 12 volts to its operating voltage of 5. So dropping from 7 volts to 5 volts the regulator is able to handle that power dissipation. Right here we've got our emergency kill switch which kills all power to the microcontroller and touchscreen display. What this does is when it's pressed, as I mentioned, kills all power and only relays power to our linear actuator driver. The reason for this is we didn't want any software involved and it's very reliable knowing it's only hardware in case of an emergency. So now that all the front is explained, we will take off this housing and show you the back. So now you guys have seen the front mechanical portions and electrical portions. We took off the housing here so you can see the internals of this product. Uh, right here we've got our Xbox 360 12 volt power supply. That feeds into our emergency kill switch which feeds our power switch 
As I mentioned before, if this is hit, it will kill all power to uh, the Arduino and the stepper motor, but keeping power to the relay and the actuator to automatically open up for safety features. Uh, right here, you can see a couple diodes I placed in here. This is to stop any voltage from coming backwards um, and coming back into the Arduino when the emergency kill switch is hit. Here is our double pull, double throw. As I mentioned before, it's required for this power supply. So after the voltage is fed through our kill switch and our power switch, it will come into our fuse box here. Uh, this is just additional fuses for safety as this product is going to go in a wood shop. And if there is a short circuit anywhere, we don't want it to start on fire and cause any damage. So these fuses should protect it. We have a fuse for uh, each main component and the main power source. So as you can see, we've got our main power, Arduino power, relay power, the actuator power itself, and the stepper motor driver power. Uh, extra fuse in case we decide to add any functionality to this later in the future. After that, the TB600 is our stepper motor driver which drives a NEMA 17 stepper motor. So this takes in direction, pulse width modulation, and enable pin from the Arduino Mega. So the Arduino will enable or disable this stepper motor driver. It will send it a PWM of the duty cycle and frequency which will change the speed and torque of the stepper motor and also the direction in case we want to reverse the wheel in the future for any future um, functionality that we would like to add. Lastly we have our two relays which control our linear actuator. Uh, the Arduino feeds two signals either high or low controlling each of these relays that then feeds 12 volts to our linear actuator which will open or close our edge cutter here as you can see bolted um, to cut the rope. Lastly, we've got two 40 millimeter fans. As I mentioned before, the voltage regulator on the Arduino Mega does get a little warm, so this is to help keep it cool. And this is also here to help keep our stepper motor cool. After about a thousand cuts, it does get a bit warm. So now you have seen all the internal components. We will box it back up and show you how it works. Now the internal components for the mechanical design portion was relatively straightforward. We really only used two different points of rotation with the first being where the linear actuator actually mounts to our aluminum extrusions. This is simply bolted on with some L brackets and bolts. And the second point where uh, the linear actuator mounts is simply to our edge cutter where it rotates about the internal joint um, on which the edge cutter pivots. The hardest part of this whole portion was making sure our holes were aligned correctly so that our linear actuator didn't cause any unwanted forces on our overall framing. Because this linear actuator is rated for 250 pounds, that could cause some serious problems for us if these forces were uh, not measured correctly or our holes were not aligned. So now that you guys have seen the front mechanical portion, the front electronic portion, and the back mechanical and electronics of this automatic rope cutter. We will now run through a demo of the features we've added in software and how it works. So you can turn it on. You've got a nice light displaying that you're getting power. The Arduino will run through a boot sequence which will automatically open the linear actuator all the way and then set it into its starting position. The reason for this is our linear actuator does not have a potentiometer so we have to base all positioning off timings. So from here, now that we're in the correct position, you can see our start screen. It hit start. Here are the additional options we added. Cut rope is our main cutting function. We have a pre-feed option which will spin the stepper motor the a lot amount of time that you have selected, feeding the rope in to start. A change razor which will open the linear actuator all the way so the user can safely remove this razor and put a new one in when needed. A get temperature option which displays the internal temperature of the rope cutter. And our extra options that we included was a rope total option. Now this is actually the total amount of rope that have ever been cut by the automatic rope cutter. It's saved into an SD card so it is non-volatile memory. So power cycles, um, unplugging this, this number will always stay and displays 
the total amount like I said. So before we ship off this product we'll clear this to zero and the user can then see the total amount of rope this cutter has ever uh, produced. So now we will go and show the demo on how this cuts. Right away since there's no rope fed in you'll want to do a pre-feed with the allotted amount of time. Default is two but Eric will insert the rope. So to insert the rope it's pretty straightforward. You insert your rope in through the feed tube lift our actuation bar, making sure that the rope is in between our guide wheel and our drive wheel. From here, Alex will keep showing the software portion. So now that this is inserted, we can run it for the allotted time of uh, maybe three seconds. We can run it, the stepper will spin for a total of three seconds, and now our rope is in the cutter and ready to go. So from here, the One Log Fire Company has a predetermined nine inch and 12 inch uh, length of rope that they are using in their products. So for this demonstration we'll just use 12 inches. Uh, they both do the exact same thing. This just determines the length of rope you would like to cut. Select your length and say you would like to cut two. Enter your quantity. Uh, there's also a delete button so say you put 20 but only wanted to put two. You can delete um, and continue to cut. So now this will confirm you want to cut 12 inch rope and two of them to cut. Yep. So right away you can see our linear actuator cutting. This is because right off the bat the rope is not in the correct length or position. So this will cut and make sure the rope is in the right spot. It will then spin 12 inches. Actuator will come down and you can see our 12 inch piece of rope cut here. On the display you can see we cut one, we have one left to cut, and we're 50% done. The actuator will then come down and cut the second rope. So these are now a perfect 12 inch piece of rope that he can use on his products. And finally we will have our cutting complete menu. It'll show the total amount cut, in our case was two, and the total amount of time to cut, in this case was .01 hours. After that, it will then start in our start mode again, and we will wait for our next order of ropes.